Hello and welcome to the Car Care Not channel. So folks, this is a fifth generation 4Runner. The owner of this car bought this car not too long ago. We did some service to it, checked it out. It's, it comes from the south with zero rust. But that's not really what we're doing in this video. Something that bothered the owner about this car from day one is the seat covers. They have some stains, some burns, possibly somebody smoked in the car and dropped an ash and it burned the seat. Really bothered him. He was looking for options to have an upholster redo it. And it does have a little bit of a custom seat. You'll see it in a bit. But then when he brought it in for an oil change and he told me, would you have any recommendations? I'm like, you know, we can get the original covers from Toyota. He was very excited. And that's exactly what we're gonna do in this video. We ordered the covers. They took a little bit of while. They're a little tricky to get the right color and right color combination, especially for something like this. But we got the seats. So without further ado, Let's remove these seats and let's get to work so you can see what it takes to replace a seat cover original for a fifth generation fall ride. Let's remove the seat. And when you do work on cars, you want to be mindful of the customer's belongings. And I'm going to put this in the back seat. Just so it's safely out of the way. Let's remove the seat covers here, seat bolt covers. So sometimes when you work on cars, you have floor mats that are in your way. So we're gonna remove these. Uh, most Toyota seats, if you ever wanna remove the seat for one reason or another, they'll have a cover like this over the front bolts, just so they're not in your face, the bolts, I suppose. Usually you just grab them and pull them forward, they pull right out. They have tabs like, they look like this, something like that. Now we're gonna remove the front bolts. 99% of Toyota seats are 14 millimeter bolts. There's very few, and especially the newer ones, are E10 inverted Torx or e-torques or whatever you want to call them. That's the size for them. So let's move the seat forward so we can get the back bolt. Over here, we are, it's a little bit more tricky because this floor mat is huge and we don't want to remove the whole thing. Usually, I kind of fold the floor mat to the side just so I can access these covers. It's gonna be a little bit harder for you to see Here's one cover, and here's the other cover. Let's remove two more 14 millimeter bolts. Here's the two bolts, nothing to them. Let's now go to back to the front, and we'll pull the seat out. One thing about seats, and once, once I pull the seat out, I'll show you the burn marks that we're replacing the seat bottom because of. I usually like to remove the headrest while it's in the car. Leave it in the back there. Move the seat in, in like halfway position on the back. This doesn't have an up-down movement. You want the seat all the way to the back. That's the ideal position for it. So let's disconnect the connectors. There's a few wires. One of them is the airbag wire, just pulls right out. And there's this and that. Then we're gonna use a clip tool to undo the clip, holds the harness just like that. This is our harness, very simple harness. And then the whole seat will come out. Now that you've gotten to this point, very carefully, you're gonna turn the seat, get it out, don't scratch anything. Close the door and we come around. The seat on this 4Runner is not super heavy. You want to speak about heavy seats? Let's talk 1990 Toyota Supra with a 90 pound seat. <laughs> this is not too bad. So let's show you the damage here. And this is, this is where absolute car care nutism, if you want to call it, is in effect. This is the burn mark 
on the, bo on the bottom of the seat. That's it. People who care about their cars, this will bother them. Now, some people will say, go get it leather repaired and do all this stuff. And yeah, they are possibly options, but the owner wants to keep things OEM, doesn't want some patch and this and that. He wants to do it OEM. He initially actually wanted to replace the back as well. I talked him out of it because it's very expensive. These seats are very expensive. We'll talk about the costs toward the end of the video. But this back, more labor intensive, a lot more expensive to buy OEM. Having said that, let's dig into the seat. Usually, Toyota seats. Not the most difficult seats in the planet to work on, but they all have this flap that comes off, this flap in the back. You just kind of undo it. it, comes right out. They also all have the airbag wire, which we are not going to be messing with here because we're only working in the bottom. The back will just come off as is. So, we're going to start by disconnecting, start kind of tracing the airbag wire. There's one. There's two, and the rest, you gotta get them with a trim tool. There we go. It's not stubborn, because it goes into a plastic piece. There we go. I'm gonna undo this. Folks, if you ever want to do work like this, this is not super difficult. This is actually the wire for the seat heater for the back. Let's undo this one as well. There's that. And then we got this other clip right here. And that's it. I'm just gonna tuck these away a little bit so they wouldn't keep coming in my way. Now, we want to start working on this cover. This is where things turn custom. Because if you look at the instructions, they are all over the place. Good luck understanding anything. But something from experience, this is a pocket screwdriver. You need this if you work on cars. You really need this if you work on Toyotas because this will save you so much time and aggravation. Very simple, with these seats, with the newer style seats, you're gonna put your screwdriver right in between the two panels and you kind of walk it until it pops. It popped at the bottom. I see it. Uh, there we go. Do not have a tendency of just yanking this off because you'll break all the tabs and then this will never sit right. Same thing in the back. I'm going to kind of walk. That's it. We got the back disconnected as well. Don't just yank this. I'll tell you why in a bit. There are two style Toyota seats. There's the one with a full skirt, like this one, if you come see it in the front. This is a full skirted seat. That means this cover is connected to another cover, connected to another one. Some of them will only have this side. Those are the easy ones. This is not an easy one. So let's flip the seat so we can see what we're dealing with. If you come on this side, we have a screw. Got a screwdriver and a magnetic tray so we can capture all our bolts. Because there are tiny, teeny screws all over the seat. Look at this cutie pie over here. And uh, don't lose them. One thing I want to tell you about working with seats, we have a clip right here. Just the plastics on these seat covers, not very strong. The word here I'm going to use here is gingerly. You want to work very gently and nothing aggressive. There's another clip right there. I'm going to put the clip tool underneath it. There we go. That's coming apart. Now we have to flip the seat. I will say one thing. This, the front piece, can separate from the side seat, side piece. But from experience, if you separate these, 
they'll never go back. It just is the way it is with these. So now let's flip the seat back. You're gonna be work doing this a lot. So this is why you will rarely <laughs> see mechanics at the gym because my gym is right here. Just carrying this left and right, left and right, back and forth. So now that we finally situated the seat, we have a clip that is right here. There we go. And another one right here. And this is why I told you, don't just pull on it. Because once we get this off, you'll see why. If you're a Toyota technician watching, this takes a lot of patience. If you've done similar work, they almost makes you think Toyota's gone too cheap on these seats, but that's, that's how it is these days. Plastics that Toyota made, make are good, but they're not really meant to be mishandled, if that's the word. We're gonna undo our harness here. There we go. So this is the side cover and Usually at a dealership, when you get to this magnificent site that this is out, nothing broke, it's a very happy moment. The reason I told you don't remove this ever, if you're ever doing some, such work, because of these clips. Do you see how this slides into these? As soon as you put a, something to pry this up, this will get mangled and it'll never go back. It'll just keep popping. Every time you sit, you push this down, it pops off. Don't try not to take these off. Be very gentle. You have clips here. You have these hooks. These are, I mean, I can move this with my hand. This doesn't take much to break. You break this and you break this ear right here. Every time you sit in the seat, this just falls off. This is why you gotta be really careful with these. When you spend the most time on this, because trust me, everything else is nuts and bolts. It's really, you'll, as you'll see right now. Usually Toyota's so will have this little dealio over here and another one on the other side. Before we get to the other side, we have the small cover. This is, for lack of a better word, this is a training wheel because this one gets sandwiched between the seat and the center console. Usually Toyota technicians will be more patient with that one, less patient with this because this one, even if it's popped and wants to come off, it'll never really come off but you still want to be gentle. Use a screwdriver trick. Don't go too much on the screwdriver here. Just enough to pop the clips. And this one will have a big clip right here. There we go. It should. There we go. See what I'm telling you about these clips? There is no way you can pop this out without one of them getting destroyed. We usually put a little bit of glue and it'll be fine because we're not gonna start costing the customer all this. There's really no way to remove this. It goes all the way inside the frame of the seat. You can't even reach the back of it. These are the small sacrifices you have to do when you do these seats. But the good thing is we still have the other side that'll hold and we'll check it and we'll see what happens. Let's take this off. Now, our seat bottom is ready to separate from our seat back. Folks, most of these seats are pretty simple. The bottom separates from the top and it comes right off. Now, majority of these seats, you're gonna have two 14 millimeter bolts, just like this one. I'm gonna take them out. Go on the other side, take the other two. You notice the seat bounced, but it didn't fall all the way back. And that's because we have these little two locators. I believe they are right here. So now, you can get a little screwdriver just to bend this. Probably gonna bend my pocket screwdriver. 
Nope, not gonna happen. Let's get a real screwdriver. Let's try this again. There we go. There we go. This is the seat back. Now our shop is clean here and this is just old habits from the dealership because you'll have all kinds of people when you're working at a dealership walking around the shop, checking things out. You'll have the guy working next to you doing some big engine job and he's covered in oil top to bottom and he'll just come by you and lean on your seat with his oily gloves. That is just the beauty of working in a dealership. Now that we've gotten at this point, we're going to start working towards removing our seat, the cover itself. The cover will come with a cushion. I am already dirty right now and we're going to need to continuously wash our hands as we go through this job. I'm going to get the harness off and then we'll go wash our hands for the first time because uh, this can get really out of control because there's grease on the motors, there's this and that. And while we're here, I want to show you something that might actually help you in your DIY adventures. I just popped. This is a seat heater wire for the bottom. This connects to, to this little guy right here. Actually remove it so you can see it. This is a controller for the seat heaters. If you ever have a Toyota seat heater that doesn't work on one side, this is the first guy. You go to the other side that works, you just unplug it from here, very simple. Unplug this, take the whole thing and plug it to the other side and see if it starts working. This is the number one cause for seat heaters to go out. If this doesn't fix it and you have power and everything, it might be the element itself, but it's a lot less common. Let's start by unclipping this. See, it's already starting to separate. We got some more over here. There we go. And same thing on the other side. seat bottom. We're nowhere near done at this point in case you because we're not gonna you're gonna see why. I'm gonna put this guy to the side because you have to swap over the cushion. This does not come in one piece. You have to actually swap the cushion into the new cover which you might have seen rust, and you see this rust is already all over my, my hands. And if you look here, there are remnants of rust. And people usually will see this and wonder, like what happened here? Somebody, at some point, spilled something on this seat. Coffee, water, let's hope that's all it is, folks. I've been working in cars for a long time. I've seen other stuff uh, spilled on seats made me actually I remember a co-worker called off that day because he was he had a headache from a seat that he took apart things happen accidents happen let's put it this way now let me go wash my hands we'll get the new seat cover and look at what we have to do so here are the new parts there's two of them because we're actually doing the drivers and passenger this is the one for the passenger side this is the one for the drivers we're gonna keep this one nice and protected here and we're actually going to put this one to the side for now because first we have to tear this apart so if you've never worked on seats there's something called hog rings basically a term that is used in the industry you'll see me put a lot of these they basically look like this very simple rings, nothing really to them. 
it is a special tool not really i want to don't want to call it special tool per se but very simple stuff just gonna open them up that's what holds the upholsters use this all the time and uh, mechanics are learning from them i guess because that's how they upholster cars So here is the seat cover, and I want you to watch a few things. You notice these discolorations right here? These are actually from the seat heater, kind of heating things up. This is how this looks like. We do have a lot of cleanup to do here because there's a lot of these hog rings all over the place. Like, let me try to, come on, you can do it. Yeah, let's get another one. There's all these remnants of these hog rings. Got to spend a lot of time, clean all these out, every last one of them, because if you leave one here, this is eventually going to pinch the seat and make a hole and we have problems. Folks, I'm going to time lapse you through the whole process if, so you can see how this completely comes back together and we'll talk at it as we go. So let's talk about the total cost for this job. And the first thing is, this is a 2020 Toyota 4Runner SR5 Premium. Pretty cool truck, it's in excellent shape, has great service history, however, looks like the previous owner did not really care too much about the interior. So the labor for this job is two and a half hours. Because we did the driver's and the passenger's seat bottom, I only showed you the passenger in the video, but we actually did both. I did the other side off camera, has a similar burn, actually a little bit worse on the driver's side. But the driver's side and the passenger side bottom covers are actually the same price. They're just under $650 for the part. It comes straight from Toyota. Very expensive. But the owner wanted things to remain exactly the same. He's been exploring a lot of options. He's been looking around. And he was actually surprised that you can actually get the seat covers. Folks, always know that every single part in your Toyota can be bought from the dealership now while we assemble the seat put it all back together i will tell you one thing i will tell you a small story about a certain 2008 toyota land cruiser this was a little bit back in time but there was a problem with a seat this is probably the only problem i've ever seen with a seat on a 2008 land cruiser first generation of the 200 series very low miles and that seat had a problem with the motor it just stopped working seat wouldn't work and there was all kinds of problems that was probably the only seat from toyota that i have seen that uh, does not come too many parts you can't really buy the seat frame you can't really buy you can buy some of the covers but the seat frame you cannot buy and that seat was if my memory serves right was eight thousand dollars for an entire seat fully assembled so uh, some of these prices can be extreme for seat parts like a seat frame expect anywhere from two thousand to three thousand dollars for like the seat bottom frame the one you see in this picture sitting on the floor that one is very expensive now let's talk about more seat problems so you would know them in case you run into them this is i'm gonna share this with you from experience when you have a seat that rocks back and forth most people assume it's the back like th the common thing is you accelerate you feel the seat lean back and you hit the brakes you feel the seat get pushed forward most people assume that it's the back is actually the seat bottom the frame in some cases in some cars you can actually take the seat out of the car and you can physically see where it's moving some of them has a bolt that you can tighten and we're good some of them is actually a weld that breaks 
You can get the weld fixed in most of these. Sometimes things are bent, but you can usually DIY a solution. So you would not have to replace the entire seat frame. There's the seat frame you see it right now in the shot. If for whatever reason you cannot fix it, unfortunately, the only place you're gonna buy a seat frame is through Toyota. Unless you go buy a used one, buy a full used seat, but make sure you check it. Now, Toyota seats in the past used to be a lot more heavier, very complicatedly constructed, but as kind of mid 2000s and up, things got a lot simpler with assembly. Some people will say they got a little cheaper and they did, but not to a point where they fall apart completely. But as you see in this picture, the two rails, they actually come apart from the seat. These two rails are separate from the seat bottom. In some cases, you can actually buy these rails separately. If for whatever reason, like especially in manual seats, you cannot move the seat or it's getting stuck or it's hard to move. Usually the rails are the culprit. But something else I will tell you about electric seats. They really don't have a lot of problems that are known that, you know, over and over again, we're talking about Toyota here. The motors, they just stop working or they're jam or they're weak, but usually you'll have those in really old cars or cars that have been subjected to abnormal operating conditions. So the motors in some cases, especially with the newer seats, they're not really serviceable parts. You have to buy the whole seat bottom to replace the motors. Some people dislike that. And when some customers had issues with the seats and you tell them the price, they're really upset. But there's a reason for that. The way the seat is constructed, it's just, it's better to have it as an assembly. Because once you take the motors apart, you're going to try to calibrate them and put them in sync and they'll never work right. And now the motors themselves are not really cheap, even in the older ones. And now you spent all this money and you're not really having the result you expected. Seat problems are not extremely common with Toyotas, but they're possible. And anything that requires seat disassembly, if you take your car to a mechanic, even to an upholster, make sure all these panels are not glued together. They're seated properly because it could take a simple two minute thing to reattach something that is not seated right. But if you don't catch it and it breaks because you didn't notice it and you use the seat and now it ripped out. Now we could have problems when you end up replacing these covers. Some of these covers are not very expensive. Some of them can get a little expensive. Like 2011, 2021 Sienna, they were notorious for the front seats to break the covers around it, the cladding. It was really that model had really cheaply made seat bottom covers. That was something that was one model that was an absolute highlight for its cheapness. The Forerunner is pretty good. Most models are pretty good, but that generation Sienna was notorious for its cheap feeling seat covers. And we're done. Ish. Still gotta put it back in the car, but that's hardly the hard part. She turned out great. I was worried about one thing as we we're going through it. I kept looking at it. I'm like, man, this might be a problem. It's not as apparent, but there is a significant color difference between the middle gray and the back gray. Mainly because, not because it's not the right color, it is the right color. It's just, this is too shiny. This needs to be clean to turn out like this. But everything else turned out great. We still need to clean it up. Maybe we'll give this a quick clean, see how it turns out. But I like how it turned out, folks. In the end, when you do seats like that, and I want you to kind of show you a close up here. You will have these little wrinkles, very probably hard to see them on camera. You have very small wrinkles. What I advise customers is if, the, if it's a winter, we have problems. If it's a summer, however, park the car outside, let it simmer in the sun. Even though this is not real leather and all that stuff, but it will actually settle and look better. It'll look a lot better. I am very happy how this turned out. It's very good. We just need to give it a good clean reinstall in the car should be done. Before you consider upholstering, I will say one thing, and this is possibly why this customer considered this. These seats have airbags. You take it to an upholstery shop, nothing against upholstery shops, but not all of them are actually going to want to deal with seats with airbag. The bottom doesn't have airbags, but still, 
there is airbags involved. Some of them don't want to deal with it. Don't go modifying your seats. Don't go changing how this looks and all that and then expect the airbags to work right. Folks, be careful with airbags. Good upholstery shops will tell you we will cost a significant amount more to do this the right way because this seam right here on the side, this seam have to be designed in a way or sewn in a way that it will open up and allow the airbag to come out. Otherwise, the airbag could pop from somewhere else because it can't penetrate the thread if you use high quality thread and all that stuff. So be careful with seats and airbags. This is not exactly a non-DIY job. It does require a little bit of skill, a little bit of experience dealing with hog noise or whatever. But if you take your time, do everything right, take pride in what you do, you're gonna accomplish anything you set your mind to do. Folks, I hope this video was helpful and informative. I hope you learned something new. If you like it, consider giving it a thumbs up. If you're not a subscriber, consider subscribing to the channel. Check out some of my other videos. And until the next video, folks, may the Lord bless you and keep you. And you have yourself a wonderful day.